I remember in college, every class I dropped was because of stuttering, meaning if I thought I was going to have to speak out loud in the classroom, I would drop the class in college. Every drop on my transcript was a class where speech was mandatory. So it took me five years. And I used to look at how could someone teach with a stutter? I did later teach classes, but that's one of the things about you that I'm so inspired is standing in front of the classroom and, and teaching. So please, please, please take over with your story. Thank you. Okay, my name is Vinam Agarwal. You know what? I'll try the voluntary stut stut stuttering. Wow. We we talked yesterday. <coughs> I should try voluntary stut stut stuttering. I may not be d d doing it correctly, but it's real, the, real good so far. <laughs> <laughs> what's the worst that could happen, right? <laughs> so uh, I'm a professor in aerospace engineering at Auburn University. I'm glad t t t to see a few of um, my department chair in in this room. So I should not should not be t t t talking trash about. <laughs> um, my job. So. <laughs> but in all fairness, it's been it's been a it's been a great experience in Auburn. I'm really enjoying it. People are really passionate about science, engineering, and football, of course. So yeah, <laughs> it's it's been fun. Uh, as you can tell, I'm also a person who stutters. I'm. Originally from India, and I came to US when I was 21, so six, seven years ago, to do my PhD. And I, I hadn't had a speech therapy before that. I come from a town we don't have lots of speech therapists there, and I come from a relatively p p poor family, so. Despite that, they did try, my parents are awesome, they tried to support me, they tried to, like, they would talk to my teachers and explain the situation, and they were awesome that way. So when I came to US, I, I started therapy February 2012, and I met John March 2012 in a, chapter meeting by National Stuttering Association. And I was going out of my comfort zone. Therapy teaches you to go out of these, uh, you know, your comfort zone into scary territory and try to do these things. John said, hey, I'm making a movie. I said, what's the worst that could happen? Sure. <laughs> Sign me up. And he even put, the third lip you see is mine. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, clearly I have a backup option of being a movie star if this whole PhD thing <laughs> does not work out. So if you, are, if you are a movie director, you are recruiting. <laughs> so I started therapy and then the whole, we learned, a, I learned a lot about dealing with, you know, shame, embarrassment, anxiety, techniques, all of these kinds of things. And of course, as, as a, I picked it up pretty quickly, but I'm also a good engineer, so I've become really lazy. And when you become lazy, you lo lose all your techniques and the thing comes back. So you have to keep doing it over and over again. So I, I've had multiple relapses and Teaching has been kind of like that. Beginning, it would be a scary thing. Then as the semester goes on, I become comfortable and then it improves. Then something would happen. Then I would become worse. So it's been an up and down. What I have gained a lot from therapy is that, you know, you get tools to deal with it. So even though there are oscillations, the amplitude has decreased, the good, the worst days are not as worse, the good days are good. So the amplitudes have decreased, hopefully the frequency will also decrease, the good days will last for longer. 
we'll see about that. But yeah, it's been a really fun experience for this movie. I've made a lot of friends with this chapter. Almost everyone you see in this movie, I've, I am a close friend of all these people. So yeah, I'm ex excited to finally have John come to Atlanta and do this. Hopefully next year we'll have you at Auburn and you'll show your movie too. Thank you. I improved my speech a lot. I didn't need to do that after a while. It definitely made me a lot more fluid. It was interesting and it had a lingering effect for several minutes of your speech. Mm -hmm. I, have, I have noticed that. So one of the very cool things about voluntary stuttering is that it transcends language. So even if I'm, even if techniques like prolongations, easy onsets, they fail in in Hindi, because you know, prolongations you are prolonging a sound or doing something, and this meaning changes. Mm. So voluntary stuttering, however, always works. Like I'm, and you can ask people who speak other languages like Spanish or Cantonese or anything like that. I would think that if you prolong it or do easy onsets or anything like that, it would change meanings. In Hindi, it does. Yeah. So what if, if you re re repeat the first ca consonant, then they still get the meaning? Yes. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious what it did for you on, on stage. It's the first time you ever did it. So, you announced to the audience you're going to uh, yeah. voluntary stutter, and then you did it. It definitely put me at ease. Definitely, when I was, I walked up, for some reason, I have done hundreds of presentations, technical, non-technical. My heart is always beating at an insane rate. When I announced I'll do vo vo voluntary stuttering, I was very calm after that. I really, really enjoyed that feeling that made me feel very comfortable so if you're walking up to lecture and your motive is to not stutter that gets you nervous yes it does yes it does right so then if you go up with the intention of uh, voluntary studying how does the meaning of stuttering change it becomes it becomes less feared like you, this is this is, I start to think of it as, oh, this will be a cool experiment to try. If I, cool. yeah. I like it. <laughs> I try to approach things as, as what's the worst that could happen. Mm -hmm. Walking up, my worst fear is I'm going to stutter. Mm -hmm. Voluntary stuttering, worst thing, it will turn into a real stutter. Mm -hmm. the, the, the origin of the word meaning comes from German. Mm -hmm. It's what you hold in mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if I'm walking up in front of a room and what I'm holding in mind, the meaning of stuttering is negative, it'll bring me shame and embarrassment, then that's what I'm holding in mind. Yes. So when you do the voluntary stuttering, you've changed the meaning. That's true. And you change what you hold in mind. That is absolutely true. That is absolutely true. It. I've also noticed that it kind of puts the listeners at ease. Not just the fact that you announce that you stutter. If you're doing voluntary stuttering, at least in my case, I become at ease. I'm no longer like, tensed up, there's no tension, there's no trying to push the words out. And there's no reading into people's reaction, that whole panic feedback loop. There is none of that. It's very liberating. It's very liberating. I really like that feeling. I could just walk up, say I'm going to do voluntary stuttering, did for a few seconds, managed to do some voluntary stuttering. And it had a very clear effect. I really enjoyed that feeling. See? <laughs> I got my interview anyway. <laughs> uh -huh. 
you have a as you're do, doing it, you have a looseness. Yes. Yeah. Your whole yeah. anatomy. Yeah. From your torso up, everything's mm. a little looser. Everything oh. else. I saw it on stage. I guess yeah. yeah. I guess if there's no residual tension in your body, you you're letting go of that. No, it's like in sports. If you're standing at the line in basketball and don't miss it, don't miss it, don't miss it. All of your all your muscle groups are tense. Mm -hmm. You're freaking out. You're putting meaning on missing, and then you're going to miss the same yeah. with golf, yeah. anything like that. But in basketball, they would say, see the ball go through the net and hear the swoosh. In golf, they would say, imagine you hear the ball hit the bottom of the cup, that little clicking noise. Mm -hmm. You just watch it go across the green grass and fall in the cup. Because it, it, there's no longer meaning to losing or to yeah. missing the punt. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the fear of success and the fear of failure both create anxiety. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, so much, as we heard in the movie, is trying not to stutter. Trying not to stutter. Yeah. And when there's no incentive, because you tell people, I'm going to stutter. In fact, I'm going to throw mm -hmm. in some fake stutters as I go. Yeah, yeah. You, 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 as you said, are liberated. And I've found that that concept baffles people. Like, mm -hmm. m my parents are awesome. They have, been, they have been very supportive of all the techniques. They ask me about it. They are like, mm -hmm. oh, what did you learn in therapy? What can we do to help you? And I told them about the tools I learned, and I told them about voluntary stuttering. They're like, huh, I wouldn't think that would work. I was trying to explain to them that you are getting the situation back in control. You are no longer, you are no longer feeding off of that panic loop. Mm -hmm. You are saying, approaching it from confidence, and you are you are saying I'm in control of what word I'm going to stutter on. Suddenly you are no longer in a feared situation, you are in a situation where you're in control. They really like that. Really and like if you keep doing it, what would it, how would it free up some of the trigger sounds? Like for example, if someone has trouble with T's or K's or G's, how does re repetitive uh, fake stuttering change those pathways? I don't, at least, for me, I don't know. I would think that the way to do voluntary stuttering would be to start with non-feared words. That's what most people do. And if you, if my name is Vinamra, so it, it's a complicated name and I'm going to stutter on V's, mm -hmm. I would probably not start by voluntary stuttering on V's. But it gives you confidence mm -hmm. to, after a while, when you get used to it, like, let's try this. Let's try to do it on V. When I had no job and no money, I would call 25 gas stations a night and ask for myself. Is Tim Ma Ma Macasey there? They'd say, no, who's that? And just hang up. 25 a night, 25 wow. a night, 25 a night. That takes I would courage. go to the, the mall. I would have a quota. I had to do... 30 fake stutters in 30 minutes. I might knock out five with the same person. I'd go try on some shoes. And, and, and the key also was to look them right in the eye. You got to yeah, look, yeah, look them yeah. in the eye and stutter. Yeah, yeah. Something crazy, too. This is back in the day when there were pay phones. The food court, uh, between the food court and the bathroom, there was like 25 pay phones. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. And I would, instead of facing the pay, pay phone, I would face the people, the swarm of people going from the restroom to the food court, and 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 I would make 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 calls like like that as strangers walked by. Sometimes they would look like, "Huh, that's kind of interesting." He's the only one facing. Yeah. And boy, that's quite a stutter he's got cooking there. Yeah. <laughs> but um, that was like rapid weight loss, uh, a healthy rapid weight loss, yeah. uh, losing uh, tens of pounds of stutter fat in a hurry because... Yeah, I can imagine that, yeah. Yeah, that's this, that, those are some of the things I would do. Very, very aggressive. Yeah. But ne necessity is, is, is the mother of invention. Mm -hmm. And when I was just, just had enough money to keep my phone on, I needed to find employment. <laughs> yeah, 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 
Yeah. I am going to try this in class just to see. But they, but they might find out you stutter. <laughs> I advertise well in advance. Like, I bet you do. Yeah, I, my job depends on it. I don't need them. Mm -hmm. My classes are already insanely challenging. Mm -hmm. I don't need them to have any more ammunition against me. Yeah. So I've I advertise. Al I've also found we do um, phone calls from my office in the mirror with direct eye contact. We might call b books a million. Hmm. Okay. Why them? Well, every author, I mean, authors like names. Names, ah, right? nice, nice. Okay. Nice. Like you actually probably find an author with your first name. Uh huh. So, book titles, authors, or video game stores like, game, like GameStop, game I stuff. prey on them. Nice. <laughs> I prey on them. And so, you can always find, once you get up to your target words and target sounds, mm -hmm. you can always find who to call. So let's pretend I'm looking, um, I have difficulty with Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Atlanta. I'm going to call Books A Million because they answer immediately where Barnes & Noble's doesn't. Sure. And I'm going to zero in the mirror and I'm going to say, for example, do you have the history of a a Atlanta in pictures? Oh. And I am getting rid of my fear of stuttering and my motor pathways what seems to be just an automatic trigger to block on the word is changing. Interesting. I have not done these kinds of phone calls. I have done calls where I would just randomly call some store or something. Mm -hmm. like I ended up in a... One day with Gail, we ended up talking to an adoption agency for some reason. Oh. Yep. I, I, I was making tough up, like I have a crib and everything. <laughs> I want to adopt a baby who stutters. Do you have any? <laughs> that would be an awesome line to say. I, I really missed that one. I should have said that. <laughs> Sir, they're not speaking at their babies. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I do want to try it out, the books a million. I do want to try it out. I have a tough time saying Auburn University. Mm. I have to say Auburn to a bunch of people. So I definitely want to try History of Auburn or any books on authors from Auburn. You can call local businesses and say, are you close to Auburn campus? Ah, yeah. You, you, you already know they are, yeah, right? Yeah, just just yeah. ping them on, on the internet. That's true. That's true. Mm. Huh. I can ask if they I had a big phone book that thick that was, you know, from use, all rabbit-eared, gnarly bent over, but the, but the, the internet makes it easier to yeah. search out your, your speech victims. I was going to say, <laughs> I was going to say phone books are no longer used. <laughs> no, no you, one. you can't find them much anymore. Yeah, mm -hmm. can't find them anymore. Yeah. How fun! You are so fun to talk to about stuttering. Hey, and the, the thing I like is I like talking to speech therapists. I like talking to psychologists. Mm. Not from my perspective, but I'm very curious to learn about things. Mm. So That's how you got where you are from Caltech to I mean, Auburn. I, I enjoy talking to about, I enjoy talking about different therapy aspects, like mm. what's tricky thing in there, what's tricky thing in there, like I learn as much information as I can. And through the documentary, I got to meet so many people. I'm sure you have been to a National Stuttering Association conference. Everyone has a unique story. Yep. Such a nice thing to learn about their, their, even though everyone's unique, you can, you can identify certain patterns that, yes. so it's very cool to find patterns in uniqueness and uniqueness in patterns. It's quite cool to find that. 